Hi, I'm uh, Colonel Chris Hadfield. I'm an engineer, I'm an astronaut, and I am lucky enough to also be a flex driver. It was huge fun to drive flex today. I mean, it was just a joy. I, I've been looking at pictures of it and to actually get here out in the desert and have a chance to get on that thing and drive it, you know, to actually see the size of it and the capability of it and handle it and get a real intuitive sense of, of what it can do right now, what it's going to do in the future. A, just a, a joyful day for somebody like me. As we transition from the Apollo era, which was sort of pure exploration, to now where people are going to start living for longer and longer times on the moon and actually start permanently settling there, it's, you also need to transition the, the equipment that, that keeps you alive and that enables the activities. And, you know, the habitats have to change, how we generate power, uh, the type of work and research we're going to do there. But all of that is going to count absolutely on, on mobility and being able to get from one place to another. So one thing we learned at the analog training sites is that mobility is everything. Once you get there, you've got to be able to move things around. During Apollo, after a while, they realized and they brought a rover because they needed a rover. And as we start to settle the moon, that's only going to become more necessary. It's a really bizarre set of requirements to try and move yourself around on the moon or Mars. You know, the temperatures are wildly different. The atmosphere that's around is, is wildly different. Even the, the nature of, of the dirt itself is, is wildly different. And you need something that is purpose designed to be able to succeed there. And so you'd get a group of people together of really deep experience in a lot of different other space applications and sort of take all those ideas, coalesce them, and, and come up with the best solution you possibly can. When we settle somewhere, you don't just need to get people from one place to another, but you need to move hardware and cargo and things, and, and you've got to bring a, a toolbox with you and, and take people and, and life support equipment, and you know the, the complexity really increases. But it's getting good enough now that we can start to have an Earth-Moon system. The Moon, if you laid it out on a map, is bigger than Africa and it's basically a completely untapped geological resource. So my vision of the future is, uh, is a world where we are finding new technological ways to improve the quality of life for as many people as possible in a sustainable way, but also to use our technology to increase the boundaries of, of all the things that contribute to that. And to have had a chance to drive that rover to see the potential of that design and it immediately appears in my mind's eye of this something that looks a lot like this is going to be helping people out as we start to live on the moon and eventually mars